That is the way you should be. And that's what the Sheikh is saying here. فَحْرِسْ رَاكَ اللَّهَ لِسْتِغْلَالِي كُلِّ أَجْزَاءِ وَقْتِكَ He says, so therefore, may Allah protect you and keep you safe. He says, use all of your time to benefit from knowledge. فَرُبَّمَا يَنْفَعُ اللَّهُ بِكَ بَلَدَكْ He says, because there's a big possibility that Allah will allow your country to benefit from you. There's a big possibility that Allah will allow your country to benefit from you. بَلْ قَدْ يَنْفَعُ اللَّهُ بِكَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ أَجْمَعِينَ He says, rather Allah could allow all of the Muslims to learn from you. Allah could possibly allow all of the Muslims to benefit from you. وَلَا تَسْتَبِئِدْ هَذَا الْأَمْرِ He says, and don't think that this is far-fetched. Don't think that this is some fantasy, something that's beyond your reach. وَلَا تَخُلْ مَنْ أَنَا He says, and never say, who am I? What am I? If we stop the book right now, how many of you right now say this to yourself? Or in the previous classes, who am I? Who am I to give a class? Who am I to give a halakha? How many young brothers graduate Medina and they have this negative black cloud falling over them, pouring rain on them wherever they go? Who am I to give a khutbah? Who am I to give a talk? Who am I to answer a question? Who am I to say this? Who am I? No, no, it's not for me. It's not me. I'm not good enough. This is, this is a really bad problem that many, many of us have. He's asking this question. He says, don't say this. إِذْ لَيْسَ عَلَى اللَّهِ بِعَزِيزٍ أَنْ يَرْفَعَ ذِكْرَكَ وَيَنْشُرَ إِلْمَكَ He says, it's not something that is hard for Allah to do. It's not difficult. It's not impossible for Allah to do. For Allah to raise your status. For Allah to extol your status. For Allah to take your knowledge and to allow that knowledge to spread. وَهَلْ وُلِدَ الْبُخَارِي وَهُوْ يَعْلَمُ أَنَا كِتَابُهُ سِيَبُغُ الْأَفَاقَ شُهْرَةً وَعُلُوًا وَرِفْعَةً أَبْدًا لَمْ يَكُنْ يَعْلَمُ ذَلِكَ حَتَّى بَعْدَ إِمَامَتِهِ He says, was Imam al-Bukhari born like this? Did he know that his book would reach all six corners of the earth? Did he know that? That his book would become a staple household name to the Muslim and the non-Muslim? And his book will be the top, the cream of the crop, the most authentic book after the Qur'an. Did he know this? He said, no way, evident. And a deep point that the Shaykh mentioned, subhanAllah, he says, even after Imam al-Bukhari became an imam, even after he reached imamship, when he was a master, he still didn't have an idea and a clue what his book would become. So just stop and think about that. Stop thinking about the 40 hadith of Noe. Do you think Noe, Rahim Allah, had an idea that his book would be translated to French and to German and to Polish and to Spanish and to Portuguese and to Swahili and to Somali? Do you think he had an idea that there would be sisters in Canada reading his book, studying his book, teaching his book? Do you, did you think he had an idea, a clue, that there would be a place called North America and the Muslims there would know his book like a household name. Pepsi Cola. Everyone knows 40 Hadith of Nawi. The first book of Hadith, 40 Hadith of Nawi. You have the average person, name one book of Hadith, they're going to say Nawi's 40 Hadith. Or Sahih al-Bukhari. Did, did he have an idea? Did he have a clue? He didn't have a clue. Some years ago, it was me and a colleague of mine. An interesting fact, alhamdulillah. This colleague of mine, he was Somali. Very talented, bright brother, mashallah. I won't mention his name. So we were at Mina, and we were in a tent, or maybe we were at Arafah, I think, yeah, it was Arafah, we were at Arafah, the day of Arafah, and we were sitting, we were reading together and studying like we would normally do, spar, fence, and he stopped and he said, subhanAllah, he said, do you think Ibn Hajar had a dream, his wildest dream, that there will be two American Muslims at Arafah studying his book, teaching his book in a tent and going over his words and benefiting from his words. Of course he didn't have a clue. He had no idea. Did he dream about it? Allah Allah, maybe he did. But the modern world wasn't like how it was back then. So just stop and think about that. Why can't you be something special? Why can't you do something special? Why can't you take 
Canada and Toronto and change it and allow a serious benefit to be etched in stone. Why can't you stomp your foot and leave imprints in, uh, in, the, in the ground? Why can't you? Why can't you put a dent in the concrete and the asphalt? Who says that your feet aren't strong enough and your stomp isn't huh, powerful enough? Did Imam al-Bukhari think that? Did he know? Did he have an idea? Did he have a clue? No, but he tried. He put his efforts in. And then Allah Azza did the rest. The author, he says, لَكَنْ بَابَ الْخْلَاصِ وَالْبَذْرِ وَالْجُهْدِ يُؤْتِي بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ أَكْثَرَ مِنْ هَذَا he says, if a person is sincere, and if a person works hard, and if a person exerts him or herself, then by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he can do more than that. Allahu Akbar. That's all you gotta do is be sincere for Allah, work hard, put in the necessary time. And I'm adding, you have to study systematically. You must study systematically. You have to study in the proper way, the right way. Take the necessary steps. You have to put your trust in Allah. Seek the barakah of Allah. You have to empty your cup. And you have to trust your teacher. Trust your teacher. Don't ask questions. But follow and listen and learn. Mimic and copy. And then as time goes on, you learn more things. And you become more independent. And you research more. You think more on your own until you dispense and do away with the teacher. And then you create your own style. And you make your own methods and your own do's and don'ts. And then be the night if Allah chooses that for you, a time will come in which you will become a teacher. And you'll have a dojo. And you'll pass it on. And you'll have students. And only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what will happen to you when that comes, when that time comes, huh? Perhaps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you a taste of your own medicine. Maybe Allah might test you with a student that doesn't trust you or a student that questions you and doubts you or a student that is hard-headed and stubborn and obstinate or a student that has a great amount of talent and potential but they're lazy or they have lack of confidence and poor self-esteem and they say, I can't do it. It's not me. No, I don't know what you're seeing in me. I'm nothing special. I can't do it. And then perhaps you'll sit back and you'll be frustrated and say, SubhanAllah, wow, I did this to sensei? I did this to my teacher? This is how we used to treat him in a class? This is how we used to talk to him and talk back to him? This is what we used to say? This is how much of a hard time we gave him? He had to try to twist our arms for us to believe in ourselves and take it to the next level. So these are golden words from the author, uh, very important pieces of advice, not to scorn yourself, not to look down upon yourself. You don't know what Allah will do to you and with you and for you. The small things, in my view, in my eyes, and it's impermissible for us to be ungrateful to Allah, no matter how humble we are or try to act, we cannot be ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and the things that Allah Azza has allowed me to accomplish in my short life in the places that I've been and the people that I've met and the many, many people who have that benefit and are influenced from Hadith Disciple on a daily basis all praises for Allah I had no idea and I had no clue I had no idea, no clue and even this class, I had no idea that I would have a class of sisters Somali sisters from Toronto, Canada I had no idea, no clue and look what we have. And the other classes and other students and other people. So this is a, another tangible point. I'm not comparing myself to anywhere near Imam al-Bukhari. But the principle is the same. I had no idea. When I wrote 40 Hadith on the Seeking Knowledge, I had no idea that it would be widespread. And people in India and Poland will be contacting me asking for a copy of the book. Brothers from Kuwait will ask for any jazza in the book. You never know what Allah would do what, what Allah would do with you. You never know what's decreed for you. You never know your destiny. Huh? What's important is is do not scorn yourself. Do not look down upon yourself. But that doesn't mean that you can remain complacent 
It doesn't mean that you can remain relaxed. It doesn't mean that you can keep seeking knowledge haphazardly. But you have to seek knowledge systematically. And it doesn't happen overnight. It takes time. These are the words that I wanted to share with you. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you all. And to uh, reward you well for this month. All of your ibadat and all of your sacrifices. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. And the same also applies to anyone whom this recording will reach. Wallahu alam.